into one. So first, we're going to talk about modifiers. Now we're really only going to talk about a specific modifier right now, and that is the subdivision surface modifier. And the subdivision surface modifier is very cool, and it becomes very handy when building an object because it allows us to make an object out of simpler and less shapes and then it kind of smooths it out for us. So let's just take a look at this cube. This is, the cube is a great example of our modifier here. So <clears throat> I'm going to take our cube and if I go over to the object menus here, um, you'll notice there's a couple constraints and modifiers. I'm going to click on the modifiers and I'm going to add the subdivision surface modifier and immediately you'll notice something really kind of cool happens to our cube. It becomes a sphere. And you have a couple controls here and one is you can increase the resolution of the view as well as the render. You should almost always have the render up around 6 okay if you want it to be really smooth. But the view you can set to be about three or four because at six it's perfectly smooth but it's you know as you increase objects with this one here it's not that big of a deal but as you increase objects um, the memory requirements get really massive and you're gonna see things blender will start to slow down if it doesn't crash which it might do so I like to put the view around three or four and it gives me a good idea of what's gonna happen and I just have to know in my head that it'll, it'll end up being smoother when I actually make a movie if I go in <coughs> to edit mode here, you'll notice that I still have my square. And this is one of the things that I love about um, the, uh, the modifier is it will show you the shape of the object, but then it will, in, in basically wireframe mode, but it will show you what the object is actually going to look like in surface mode. <coughs> you can turn this off by going over here. It says use modifier while in edit mode. So when you're in edit mode, you can turn that off, but I like to keep it on. Now, one of the things that you can do to control how much this actually works is you can control the sharpness of the edges. So I'm just going to grab an edge here, right click on it. So I went down and I selected the edge selector and I just right clicked on that edge. And one of the things that you can do with that is go down to the mesh menu and you'll notice that here there's an edges controller. <clears throat> and what you have um, is um, you can crease an edge. So just think like when you're making a paper airplane and you fold a paper airplane. If you don't crease it, you let it go, it goes back to normal, pretty much. It's a little bit of a bend in the paper, but it doesn't actually make a real sharp fold. But if you put your fingernail down the length of the paper, it creases it. And now you have a, sp a line in your paper that will never go away. You could iron it and it won't go away, right? You'll always have a little bit of a line. So what we're going to do <coughs> is you hit that, or you can hold Shift and E. Just hit Shift E once. And then you move the mouse to the right, and it starts to crease the edge. See that? And I'll make a little crease. Now you'll notice that the factor went to 1.0, that's your highest. And if I look at my object here, you can see that what it's doing now is it's creased this edge. Now it doesn't have a sharp edge all along the top because it's trying to mix that with the non-creased edges along the sides. If I, however, were to right click or, and, sh and hold the shift key and select all those, then hit shift E and move the mouse to the right. You can see now how I've created kind of like a bullet, okay? I've created a sharp edge all around this side and then it then blends into my fully rounded bottom. You can also go somewhere in the middle. So let me, oh well before I do that, now you can also take a look at the edge that you see um, the, the lines, the edges that you see in the wireframe are now highlighted purplish, pinkish, magenta colored, okay? This basically designates a full crease, a factor of one. 
Now, if I were to increase <coughs> something at less than 1, watch what happens here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my four corners and I'm going to start to crease them. Shift E. And notice how it changes again the top a little bit more. But somewhere in the middle here, I'm at about plus 0 0.50. <clears throat> and you can see now how it's got a little bit more of a rectangular feel to it. But it still has these rounded edges along the corners here because I didn't go the full crease. If I were to go to the full crease, shift E again, and then go all the way to 1, you can see how it starts at a full corner here and then slowly blends into uh, a softer, rounder edge. So you can actually do a lot. Now let's say this is too much. Shift E, and now I can go um, back, just follow the arrows, and I can subtract it. If I don't like a certain level, I can also go in here afterwards and I can type 0.300. Or maybe I want less than that, 0.100, okay? And I can you know, see exactly what that's going to do to the object. You'll also notice that now the edges have a new color to them. They're a little thicker, but they're not that bright magenta color that the top ones are because the top ones are a full one 0.0 crease factor. Okay, this is a very, very handy thing. We're going to use this a lot because the subdivision surface modifier is really, really important. But you might want hard edges in certain places. So the ability to crease an edge to create a hard edge, even though the subdivision surface modifier is on the object, is really huge. So it's going to be a really big deal when it comes to making our first character, or first objects. Does this make sense to everybody? And it's how you keep your, so this started out, what's, what's interesting is this started out as a cube. And then when I added the modifier, it ended up a blob. And now that I've started to crease the edges under the mesh menu here, um, it has now become a, a unique object, kind of like a little bit of a bullet or, a, or I don't know what it is, you know, but it, it's become a unique object because of my ability to crease. Now, one thing I will say this, and this is just a little tip. If you want it to remain symmetrical, it's good to do the edges at the same time. So you'll notice that when I went and I did these four edges, I held the shift key down and, and right selected them before I started doing the crease. You'll find it very difficult to do the crease on one, then go to the next and do it again, and then do the next and do it again. It just takes forever. Um, and sometimes it can be hard to get the same exact crease on all four edges if you don't use the numbers. So here, if you're just dragging the mouse and not using the numbers, it's good to just do all four of them at once so that you've got them at least consistent. Does, does that make sense too? So it's just a little tip. Okay? Any questions about this part?